But wait, there's more. Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to be taking another five random mass market paperback books and I am going to be reading the first chapter, deciding whether to bump this up into my TBR or something I do actually really want to read or to dump it and put it in the unhaul pile if it ends up being something that does not work. Now, the first video uh, didn't go so well because uh, I ended up getting rid of four out of the five books uh, that I, I uh, decided to read the first chapters of. There was, I originally kept one more and then I read a little more and I'm like, no, I don't really want it. But we're going to hope for better luck this time. I think I have at least one that's going to be an ace in the hole uh, that we'll keep. But with no further ado, let's get started. So the first one is I think the overall, yeah, by, by six years, the overall newest book that's in this stack uh, I've had for a, a bit. That is The Royal Exile by Fiona McIntosh. Uh, and this is book one in the Valisar trilogy. Uh, so this is from 2008. So let's read the blurb. <clears throat> the Valisar royals of Penraven face certain death, for the savage tyrant Lothar covets what they alone possess, the fabled Valisar enchantment, and his irresistible power to coerce, which will belong to Lothar once every Valisar has been slain. But the last hope of the besieged kingdom is being sent in secret from his doomed home in the company of a single warrior. The future of Penraven now rests on the shoulders of the young crown prince, Lionel, who, though untried and untested in the ways of war, must survive brutality and treachery in order to claim the Valisar throne. So, uh, last royal type hope. Uh, first of a series. This is one, too, where I, uh, I have a lot of pretty random books. This one I've had for less time. Let's take a look though at the map here because I always like it when we have a map. This is kind of interesting because it uh, kind of like stars out like almost like a hand uh, with some of these different ones. But map is always a good first sign. Uh, we've got acknowledgments and this one of course. I got pretty lucky I felt like without having ones that had prologues. This one has between the prologue and the first chapter. That gets us like almost 30 pages. So this one will take a little bit, but let's go. Let's read the first chapter and the prologue of Royal Exile. So right after I stopped filming the first time, I remembered why I picked this up. Because there's a nice blurb from Robin Hobb on the back, just generally saying that she really likes this author. So this is pretty interesting. Uh, it starts out with uh, basically there is this like rabble horde of barbarians that are going and attacking and slowly taking over these really powerful kingdoms that are all in alliance and they apparently all just thought that this was going to be you know no big deal and that he was just you know some dumb barbarian but apparently he's actually very intelligent and has like extensively planned this and did a lot of things to make them uh, underestimate him and so he's like rolling in getting ready to wipe everyone out and go for the big kingdom which is that kingdom of the Valisars that was mentioned in the blurb that have some sort of power, which that part wasn't really explained uh, at this point. But in the first chapter, uh, the, the plan basically to have the young crown prince spirited away is started. Uh, the thing I wasn't expecting is in the first chapter, uh, the queen is giving birth to another baby. It ends up being a girl. And then the king, very secretly, without even telling her for sure, decides that uh, the, the baby girl needs to be killed uh, so that she can never be captured and like used by the the barbarian leader Lothar who's trying to take over and then there's an implication apparently that this like royal dynasty uh, may just quietly kill any female babies that they have and just uh, say that they they basically don't survive apparently there hasn't been a uh, princess in centuries but there's that, that implication that that's a normal thing too which also wasn't particularly explained so there's a lot set up and a lot of questions I have. So uh, very interested in this one. This will definitely be one that I'm keeping. Um, and I felt like, despite the fact that I said it was like, so 27 pages was the, the prologue in chapter one. It read pretty quick and I'm definitely interested. Uh, so this one is, is going in the, the keep pile for sure. So next up we have The Truth Sayer's Apprentice by Deborah Christian. And this has like a very, I guess like historical fiction type cover, uh, at least to me, this almost looks like this would be some old painting. 
Um, and so that was interesting. And I kind of remember getting this. Uh, let's read the blurb, though. Um, <clears throat> oh, it's, it's got a blurb from Lloyd Alexander. So there's another one, author I enjoy. So it's always cool to see. Uh, so the Truth Seer's robe is his cloak of office, said to have once belonged to the frost giants of a faraway land, and divination is never done without it. When brutal trespassers steal the seer's robe from his mountain alcove, his young apprentice Dallin must track it down. For without the robe, there can be no truth sayer. But there has never not been a truth sayer, not in the long years since Kodana was first delivered from the skies by the gods to divine truth from lie amongst the ice tribes of Turakem. Perhaps that time is coming to an end. So, seems interesting. Um, and then, I mean, Lloyd Alexander is mostly a, a children's author, so I don't know if this is supposed to be to read kind of young. It doesn't look like it would, uh, but I think it'll be interesting. So let's jump in and take a look at this one. Oh, first got to check for a map, though. I can't forget. So this does have a map. Uh, we've got... So first we have, like, the kind of the world map, and then what looks like a city map. So the city is at Jorvi, which is really hard to say. Uh, I wonder if this is, like, it talked about ice giants uh, and uh, ice-like people. So I'm wondering if this is kind of, like, uh, Scandinavian or Norse-inspired or something like that. Because um, <laughs> the name's something that looked like it. But let's jump in and let's read chapter one. So it literally even says Icelandic on the back if I would have read it. Uh, but so I read the first chapter, and I, it was it wasn't, like, terrible, but it definitely didn't pull me in or particularly interest me. Uh, it's just basically, it's the, the truth series apprentice is uh, gonna go travel because, like, the magic's not working. Like, the, the, the robe hasn't actually been stolen at this point. Uh, so I guess he's gonna travel, get in all kinds of trouble, and then it's gonna be stolen. I looked up uh, on Goodreads for this, and the ratings are really, really bad. Uh, and so since it didn't pull me in at all and the ratings are really bad, I think I'm gonna move this to the unhaul pile. Let me know, like us in the first one, though. If this is something that you've read and, and definitely think I should read it, I won't be getting rid of any of the books in my unhaul pile for a while yet. Uh, I'm just kind of stockpiling right now and moving them off to a different area. So let me know. But uh, it did not pull me in at all. And with really, really negative reviews, too, I'm just like, eh, maybe, maybe this one can just go. So we're going to move that one over there for now. So next up, we have Brightly Burning by Mercedes Lackey with this real interesting cover on it. Um, which is, is just, it's a very, like, kind of odd old school fantasy cover. Now this, because I'm familiar, at least with Mercedes Lackey, I don't know that I've read anything of hers specifically, uh, but I'm, I'm familiar with her as an author and I'm not sure if I'm going to like this. This is definitely potentially in the middle. Um, but let's take a look at it. So I don't think I even commented. Truth Series Apprentice was from 1999. This is from 2000. Uh, so let's read the blurb, though, and see. So it says, A Curse of Fire. When Archer and Nelda Chitward moved their family from a small rural village to the bustling city of Haven, it was cause for great celebration. After all, their textile skills had made them leaders among their guilds, welcomed into the highest guild social circles. But not everyone in the Chitward home was happy about this improvement in the family's position. Levan, their middle son, had no desire to be a cloth merchant, needleworker, cloth dyer, or anything related to his family's guilds. He didn't really know what he wanted to be, except back home in Aldercroft. To make matters worse, his parents had enrolled him in an exclusive private school. It was a place where the arrogant older students were expected to keep discipline, and as lanky, undersized 16-year-old newcomer, uh, Levan quickly became the primary scapegoat. I'm already not liking this. Uh, I'm not sure why I bought it besides the cover. Maybe it was just the cover. Uh, <laughs> it didn't help that whenever the older boys caught him, he turned a bright scarlet with suppressed rage. A rage would left his skin feeling sunburned and tender, and so filled his mind that he was unable to see, hear, or even think. For days on end, Levan was overwhelmed by blinding headaches and was unable to attend classes, yet even his pain was a welcome respite from the daily torture he suffered at school. But nothing could have prepared Levan for anyone in Haven, for or anyone in Haven, for what was to come. For from his rage, a gift unlike any known in Valdemar would be born in a fiery conflagration, which heralds and healers alike would be hard-pressed to contain. So some sort of fire magic, I'm assuming. That did not... Uh, sound interesting to me at all. Um, so we're going to look 
uh, and see, let's see, do we have a map? So this is Legendary Sword of Harold Laban Firestorm. So this seems like maybe this is part of an ongoing series, because there's a couple of different timelines that are included here for um, the Heralds of Valdemar series. So it looks like there's... Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of a whole bunch of series here, apparently, that are included. So this is apparently an ongoing series. I don't know if this is something I'm supposed to even read first, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, and we'll read the first chapter and see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I will uh, like it. It didn't. The blurb didn't sound promising, but we'll we'll find out. Yeah, I think I made the right call uh, from reading the blurb. I just don't care. This one also has like a thirty-page first chapter, and I I read enough of it. Like I don't I don't particularly care. The blurb didn't really interest me. I think I just grabbed this because the cover's interesting, and I've heard of the author at some point. Um, but I don't know that this is going to be for me. So I'm just gonna slide it on over. <laughs> To the unhaul. So I do have some fun ones uh, for the last two though. So at least one of these should hopefully turn out well, but I'm also, even if it turns out badly, I'm really excited to talk about Illumination by Terry McGarry. Not only does he have a fun to say name, and I will read the blurb in a moment here, but this one I specifically know has one of the dumbest maps I have ever seen in my entire life. Which is probably a little hard to tell. I've tried to look this up before. I couldn't find a better picture, to be honest, than me just showing you. Uh, but if you look, it's in the shape of a man. Uh, and it literally is, you have things like the toes, including the big toe and the little toes, the boot, the heel, the ankle, the strong leg, the belt, the heartlands, quite literally, the head, the crown, the neck. Like, it's all legitimately named after body parts. Um, and it is so incredibly silly. Um, oh, there, there's the knee. Um, so I, I remember buying this because the blurb does sound interesting. I'm going to read it in a minute and then seeing the map and just thinking, what is going on? Let me read the blurb, uh, cause it's, it's kind of a weird cover, kind of interesting though. Uh, and then the blurb is, after a lifetime of training, Leith was proud to have passed her final challenge and become a true mage, ready to journey to the land of Idenmir and find a triad to bond with as an illuminator. But she, the very night of her triumph, her light fails her. She can no longer see the magical illumination guiders, and thus, despite the mage's badge upon her breast, can no longer call herself illuminator. Refusing to accept a lightless future, Leith travels to the city and petitions the senior mages of the land for help and a cure. They set a task for her to fulfill. She must find and capture the rogue dark mage and bring him to them for justice. Only then will her light be free. So begins the most important journey of Leith's life. Um, oh God, this has a blurb from Elizabeth Hayden on the back. I literally got rid of a book just for that uh, earlier. So I have much less faith uh, in this now. But we'll find out. Uh, I, there is, I know the second book is, I think, called Triad, so this is part of a series. Let's find out, though, and we'll read the first chapter, and I'm honestly, I don't know, I'm, I'm just so curious, after finding about the map a while back, to actually go in and read the first chapter. So let's find out, and I'll update you on what I think. What did I just read? Um, so there aren't any, like, normal chapters. There are random symbols, and sometimes there's a word with it that appear to be chapters. I read, I guess, what would be the cro the prologue called The Serpent, uh, which is somebody like fleeing, uh, I'm guessing a land mass that was shaped like a serpent. Uh, but it was really strange. And then I start reading the first, I guess, chapter. I was really, really odd. Like just the way this is written, it barely feels barely feels like it's in English. Um, I, this was really strange. Uh, so just between it being weird, having a quote from Elizabeth Hayden, and uh, also a blurb from the Romantic Times, Terry McGarry, your name is really fun to say, and your map is really strange, but I don't think you're for me. So on we go. I do have, though, uh, what I hoped would be my ace in the hole. Now, I have had this book for many, many years. I actually got a replacement copy a while back, but I've had, I have had a copy of this book for many years, and I had no idea what it was, and I do know what it is now, 
and I'm I've been told what happens in the first chapter, so this should be a really fun one. That is the Baker's Boy by J.B. Jones, the first book in the uh, the Book of Words, Volume One of the Book of Words, and this cover I got this because it looks like it's going to be cheesy. Uh, classic fantasy, and like it's exactly what I expected. It's called The Baker's Boy. Uh, apparently, uh, I had found out uh, for those of you who don't know, J.B. Jones is well known for like very dark fantasy, very specifically, including this book, so that it is not what it seems. Um, so, let's do a quick read of blurb here. So, the vast castle Harville, where King Lesketh lies dying, two fates collide. In her regal suite, young Meliandra and the daughter of an influential lord rebels against her forced betrothal to the sinister Prince Kylock. In the kitchens, an apprentice named Jack is terrified by his sudden uncontrolled power to work miracles. Together, they flee the castle, stalked by a sorcerer who has connived for decades to control the crown, even committing supernatural murder to advance his schemes. And a young knight begins a quest leaving behind his home and family to seek out the treacherous Isle of Larn, where lies a clue to his desperate search for the truth. Here, a wondrous epic of darkness and beauty begins. So he even says it's dark. I must have never uh, caught that. But uh, I'm, I've never actually read the first chapter. I've just been told what happens in it. So I'm pretty excited. We do get uh, a very small map, but there is a map here. Pretty standard. We've got the dry lands, the great marshes, that sort of thing. Uh, but let's give this a quick read. Oh, it's got a prologue too. These all had the longest, the longest first chapters. Chapter one ends on page fifty. So we're we're gonna read part of this chapter because I'm pretty sure I'm keeping this anyway. So we're gonna read part and react to it. So considering how long even the prologue was, I just read that, and this was even more messed up uh, than I knew. So just to, to read really quick, um, this is how it starts. This is the very first part of the prologue, even. The deed is done, Master. Lusk barely had a second to notice the glint of the long knife, and only a fraction of a second to realize what it meant. Boralus sliced Lusk's body open with one forceful but elegant stroke, cleaving from the throat to the groin. Like, that's how it starts. And so we uh, follow this Boralus, who's the, like, dark sorcerer. Uh, and after he kills his own guy, uh, he then sneaks into the, the queen's chamber because he has drugged her uh, and assaults her in order to get her with his child uh, for some sort of prophecy. Uh, and then he reminisces about the time he accidentally killed his mother when he was 13. And I'm like... This was nuts. Um, I feel like chapter one would be a more feel of the story, and the prologue was definitely for shock value. Like I said, I was going to be keeping this anyway. Um, I've heard good things about the author, and so I'm interested to see where this goes. But this was a really messed up prologue. I don't know that I've read a more messed up prologue than this at this point. Uh, a lot of really not good stuff, but I think that's uh, somewhat to be expected with J.V. Jones from what I've learned. Um, so that, though, is the end of this. Now, I did just realize that completely unintentionally, all five of these are female authors uh, of these ones. Because Terry McGarry is female, Mercedes Lackey, Deborah Christian, Fiona McIntosh, J.B. Jones. So that's interesting. Didn't even realize that I, I grabbed these. But so all five female authors. I do have two uh, going in the heat pile. So The Baker's Boy and Royal Exile, which seemed very interesting at the beginning uh, are, are going to be the ones to keep. And these other, uh, Illumination, Brightly Burning, and The Truth Series Apprentice are for now going into the hall box. As with last time, if you read these, think they are good and that I should keep them, let me know in the comments, because I'm definitely willing to give them a try. Uh, and let me know your thoughts, too, on the others, if you read those. Uh, besides The Baker's Boy, which I feel like is slightly more well-known, I'm not really, I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about any of these, and even J.B. Jones stuff I don't think is crazy commonly well-known. Um, so it'll be interesting to try. I do think I'll probably do at least one more of these videos, uh, so hopefully you're enjoying them. They've been interesting to make, but that's the end of this one. Make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Check the link in the description for the Wizardly Duo Discord. If you want to chat these books, any books, really anything at all, it is a lot of fun and we would love to have you. And of course, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. Mm -hmm.